common problems and how to extend the quality of life for your cherished companions. As a community advocate, I will also discuss important social issues that affect our city. I plan to showcase organizations and heroes who are doing amazing things to help others. Remember to tune in every Tuesday morning at 10, starting soon. This is Miriam, and you're listening to KXBS, the voice of Stockton. You know what I got? I got a picture of his face with the little blue pillow on it. The sleep face. And we're, we're in Chicago. <laughs> Are they already in Chicago? The one and only Leo Biaz. Hey, Leo. I'm excited to be back, my man. Uh, it was nine days in Vegas. We got stuck in the desert. And we had a little hangover remix out there, man. Um... I wore a wig to school once, and they said no headgear was allowed. <laughs> um, How did, the, did spider they, web Was it tights. obvious that it was a wig? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. I was, I was, was having a fun. Wig. <laughs> See, this is exactly why we have them on the show, and this is what makes them fun. You're listening to KXBS, the voice of Stockton, 92.1 FM. This is a production for the voice of San Juan. You got it, homeboy. Island boy. Dicen que soy poderoso. Ah, yo solo soy su amigo. No se falta ver y volar. Saben a qué me dedico. Go to tvosj.org. The voice of San Joaquin and the voice of Stockton presents Ready for Rescue with your host, Cliff DeBaugh. That's you. Oh, hello, good morning, <laughs> good afternoon. <laughs> I'm just the co-host. <laughs> this is Cliff DeBaugh with Ready for Rescue. I'm the founder and my co-host, Ben Sanchez. Awesome. The best freelance writer in the Central Valley, Oh, I, I might add. You do really well, I know. I know. We, I've, and, I've gotten a lot of amazing articles yeah, out there. Yeah, and you can follow Great Ready Cliff. for Rescue on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and readyforrescue.com. And our aim is really to increase your awareness of what to do. When you have a crisis at home, to call 911 and to increase your knowledge of the many services available in the community here within the health arena. And this week we're going to go through some different happenings around the 911 community. And one of those is down in the city of Chula Vista. Chula Vista. Which is new. They were under a pilot program from the FCC. Mm -hmm. And what they do is during a 911 call, before the officers arrive, they send out a drone from the police headquarters. A, an officer's on a roof watching where it goes and making sure it's not running into bird flocks of birds or any other obstacles in the flock air. Flock of seagulls? Yeah, flock <laughs> of seagulls. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's giving them better situational awareness on the, the officer that's going to be responding. And so it's a safety factor, and they can do that all while the crime's in progress. And it's a six-month program. It's been active. And they have used this drone to assist in the rest that began like last October. And this, er, this March, they actually got an extension from the FCC to f extend the program. And they extend that program now, instead of line of sight, which was the old rules, mm -hmm. As companies are looking to further package delivery, agricultural operations, medical equipment delivery, public safety, because there are some areas testing delivery of medical devices and medicines through drones. Right, and Amazon's kind of playing with this too, right? Oh, yeah. Drone delivery? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, they want to deliver package. by yeah. you know, within you know, radius. And they got mm -hmm. warehouses mm -hmm. all over, so they yeah. want to optimize it. And it's it's become a tool to help. And I I have this cautionary thing floating in my head that, I was at a hardware con yesterday over at the Computer History Museum. Where is that at? That's over in Mountain View. Okay, Mountain View. On Shoreline. Oh, really? Yeah, it's right Shoreline, Shoreline Amphitheater? It's close. Okay, Same exit cool. almost. Used to go to concerts out there. Yeah. And what was amazing was there was a company there that has cameras that they actually are in drones. And 
those cameras take 30 frames per second. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we talked a little bit about this. And they, they can see a license plate from two miles away. And that's pretty incredible when you think about it with all the data that's being collected on a peripheral sense as well as, as a, uh, being used at the time. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where this is going. But they, they got this extension from the FCC based on the package delivery and public safety aspect. And now that radius is 40 miles. So when you think about that, we're here in Stockton. That gives you a picture of diameter that extends from Angel's Camp to Tracy. Wow. And the, the city of Chula Vista is actually 52 square miles. Mm -hmm. So it's outside their boundaries as, as well. Chula Vista. Yeah, down close to the border. Yeah. It's a nice city. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. What's, uh, what's the population? Uh, 50, no, wait, 65,000, I think. Okay. Uh, it's on my other sheet here. Mm -hmm. I, let's, let's say 65,000. Yeah. I'm, that's a good number. That's, I agree with that. Yeah. What do you think of? I think it's bigger than <laughs> that, actually. <laughs> I think it's bigger than that. I've been there. I love it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's been, it's been some time. But there, you know, it's, it's the data collection and, what they do with that data afterwards? Seven, uh, two hundred seventy thousand. We all, as citizens, need to be aware. <laughs> really, two hundred seventy-five thousand. Wow. Okay, thank you, Go. Yeah, we were just a little off. Yeah, a few thousand. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so they're. I thought so because we all heard of Chula Vista. Like, how do we? Yeah. Hear, how do yeah. we hear yeah. this month? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'd be like Lodi, but you heard of Lodi yeah. from Amgen, right? Yeah, That's right, Amgen. and Amgen's coming through here on the fourteenth of May. Are you uh, are you going to be a part of that, Gov? Amgen. Well, I, you know, I guess you know we yeah, do we're going to do that. Stock don't we yeah. do? And the the questions in Chula Vista from the citizens really do concern the collection of that data and how it's used and who gets to see it. Right. So as citizens of the city and the state, because this will probably go statewide once they prove this concept, mm -hmm. especially with with the package delivery, you know, not only would the PD be collecting data, but anybody that uses the system is collecting data. Right. Oh. That, that's kind of <laughs> mind boggling and scary at go, the same time got, to me. Got just, thought. You, you I want, can see it. You want to go scarier. Uh, I was reading that they, um, that people's walk, is very unique oh yeah and the way you walk is, I, is quite unique yeah a and they now have a computer that could identify, identify people by their gait yeah yeah <laughs> so now a drone <laughs> equipped with that technology could deliver to you personally yes it could <laughs> just like oh he's well, at the mall <laughs> think about it there wait for him at the exit there amazon's <laughs> delivering packages to homeless guys on new york streets yep I mean, this is all real stuff because your cell phone's with you wherever you are. You could be at the beach and have a drone delivery come down, or you could be, you know, stopped at a roadside rest and say, "Hey, I need, I need be some refreshment." And... Do Domino's doing it too. Yeah. yeah. Domino's. Yeah. Domino's yeah. Pizza. Yeah. All... What? They said we'll, <laughs> we'll deliver to your house or wherever. Wherever you are. <laughs> See, that's the thing. It's, it's an expansion of thinking and convenience, yeah. and yet all of these devices that are used to do that all collect data on the way so that's license plates cars like people report. walking that's what we said out that's there. that's what renee was saying yeah because yeah. renee and i were thinking tom cruise minority and and just a little known pop culture fact minority report was a written by philip k dick one of the greatest science yeah. fiction writers of our time oh oh wow mm -hmm. amazing yeah. story anytime anytime a writer gets a story right decades in advance you he, already know he had a lot of yeah. incredible ideas that have really like blade runner and, yeah. and all these other you know that are big motion picture films that yeah. like really are like whoa that's kind of scary but he was I, writing about that i i remember ray bradbury's <laughs> story called the veld mm -hmm. yeah and it was kids watching a tv that was the whole wall yeah mm -hmm. and then it became real and the lions ate the parents wow yes that's yeah. gonna happen next year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, they're they're doing holography. Ready for rescue. We're yeah, ready for rescue. We're yes. coming. Watch out for those screen lines. VR. <laughs> ready for rescue VR. There you go. I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. Pop into your gameplay oh, and save you. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. oh, that would be cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I need you support. don't get another life. You need support. Well, you know, they're implementing virtual reality in a lot of things now, like museums and things, too. They're really yeah. trying to find more educational ways instead yeah. of the game way. Right. Yeah, I highly advise going through the Computer History Museum because mm -hmm. it takes it back to the use of 
abacus is calculators and mm -hmm. slide rules and bringing it up through ad machines all the way up to the to, current day and they've got ENIAC a, oh yeah ENIAC yeah, yeah. <laughs> ENIAC was the first electronic purely electronic computer yeah. so mm -hmm. I got struck by lightning yeah right, right. wow <laughs> wow <laughs> but but now so, I mean wasn't it like a three floors big or something oh and, yeah it was and, huge and it, it was just a calculator basically right yeah it mm -hmm. was doing calcs for the the uh, armed forces doing math yeah, yeah. And then the next thing, you know, we're talking about rescuing in a, in a peripheral way here, in a virtual way, mm -hmm. is that the American Heart Association has done a study on CPR, the uh, hands only. Yes. You know, where you're not yes. doing the breath part. Yeah. yeah okay. They do recommend hands and breath for children, though. Right. That's, but that's okay. the essence. So hands only for... So it was a 10-year study, mm -hmm. and the bystander rates on CPR rose from 40% to 68%. Ah. Over that ten-year period, so okay. so it's to keep it's to encourage people to actually do it. Then yes, yeah. up in Kings County, Washington, right? They implemented a program mm -hmm. and they trained as many people as they could get on hands-only CPR, mm -hmm. and they also put defibrillators in coffee shops and and the, any service vehicle to the public. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, no matter what it was, what agency they had a, a defibrillator in the car. Yeah, and they I decreased. Hear they're going in high schools too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That is true. Mm -hmm. And they um, found that their mortality rate on a 911 call went down by 20, 18 to 22 percent. Wow. Yeah, that's huge. So it's a huge impact that we yeah. can do that. We're, we're working on something like that as a test right now out at uh, Weston Ranch. We're putting that together. That's mm -hmm. like, that's, man, that's tens of thousands of people. Well, yeah. 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 You know, when you, on the financial side of that, our, our lifetime, we're valued at $9.2 million individually. Oh, and a, they figure out, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know you had that much money? Yeah. <laughs> I'm 45. I think, I think some of that's. Gone. Well, you're halfway through it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the idea is that, you know, a, a one minute time savings in a 911 call, they figure the U S highway transportation agency figures that saves 10,000 people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you implement your citizenry with that kind of knowledge and then you couple it with what we do with our program mm -hmm. just on address identification with house numbers, right. we could we could do that. Yeah, I know we could save a minute. And then when you get in the whole uh, part of the, the house and everything, what we can do, mm -hmm. we know we can save more than that. But oh, yeah, we can claim a minute because that's been studied. Right. Exactly. And the. The, it was just seconds chest matter. Seconds only. Seconds matter. Yes. Yeah. Save, save a minute, save a life. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I've heard that before. I heard that on a promo. Yeah. On, yeah. on the best station in Stockton. Oh. <laughs> Not only Stockton, but San, San Joaquin Ho County. Yeah. San Joaquin. <laughs> yeah. And remember, the first person that's involved in that is you, yeah. with your house numbers being visible. That's right. Because that's your first life-saving device on your property. Right. right. And then the first life-saving device that you get when you call in is your dispatcher wow yeah. and this week is public safety telecommunicators week wow who knew who knew wow we so these are people who uh, largely go thankless yes and yeah. uh they do. They, they always uh, deal with stressful calls as, and mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> as high, the, high uh, call volume, Facebook high image stress. here is uh, dispatching is all about finding the calm and the chaos. Yeah, and that's yeah, actually what dispatchers do. They're the ones that remain calm, even though you're going woo woo out there, yeah. you know, on the phone. I don't know what I'm doing, you know. Mm -hmm. right. Was and that like got a, a, a Three Stooges? Woo 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 woo. That's yeah. as close <laughs> as I can get. Nine one one. What's your emergency? Yeah. Woo -woo -woo -woo. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and you're in a good mood. You're like, you know, I'm, I'm having a heart attack, but it's way, yeah. way oh my better God. now that I heard yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. I, I was, you know, I do I do in home service in the winter time. Mm. And I was going by a guy's house and, and something said I needed to check on him. He's yeah. like living right off the road. And I got there and he was actually having a heart attack and he was yelling. And his main concern was his dog. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Who's going to take care of my dog? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and he would be, he'd be talking to the dispatcher and then he'd scream out in pain and then start talking to the dispatcher. And I'm like, what are you doing? Fortunately, his door was unlocked so I could get in mm. when I heard, heard him scream. And he says, somebody's got to take care of the dog. I'm having a heart attack. And I'm like, okay, I got it. I'll handle the dog. You just stay on the phone as long as you're still conscious. <laughs> <laughs> and, what, what did he put it on pause? What yeah, <laughs> I don't know. He's like, heart attack, hold on. Wait a minute. Yeah, I'm Wait, serious. That's what he was saying. Dog. That's actually what he was saying. I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't have been there. And 
Wow. You know, I went around the house and got his slippers and gathered his meds up and put them in a bag and, mm-hmm. you know, the things that I knew how to do just from my research at the time, because this yeah. goes back a few mm-hmm. years. And it was all ready for them when they got there, and they went, wow, we don't have to gather them. So that saved them yeah. X, X number of seconds or minutes, yeah. actually, mm-hmm. yeah. and trying minutes. to figure out where things are. Yeah. So those just small things like that. And here in the U.S., it's really a diverse... Well, actually, back, back to that point, okay. you just said something really, I think, huge. I mean, anyone that has some sort of precondition or they had, you know, uh, you know, a previous incident of, mm-hmm. you know, a heart attack or, or uh, hypertension or whatever it might be. Right. Sh- shouldn't they have like a go bag just ready? Yes. You know, people got uh, yeah. allergies or. Mm-hmm. or you know, oh, yeah. You yeah. Know, you, you, you know, know EpiPen and all that, right? Well, it, you need a go kit, right? You, you're getting ahead of me where we're going with this, but okay. since you brought no, no, it's great because since you brought it up, we can cover it again. It's all okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the go bag, you, if you know you're going to go to the hospital, have something as a reminder from home. Oh, you know, nice. Picture your pet, granddaughter, grandson, mm-hmm. family, whatever gives you that feeling of ease while you're there. Yeah. Uh, copies of your insurance, your driver's license, anything pertaining to your health is the best way to say that and uh an old pair of slippers or you know a new pair sitting in the bag ready to go or nice. you know and some jammies if, depending on your condition you know when you go out of the house who knows how long you'll be there yeah it's like having your emergency kit like just ask the oes advises us to do with right. your you know your three-day supplies of things bug out bag <laughs> yeah well basically yes <laughs> except they advise us to keep it in a closet yes. on the bottom that's right and in lodi on the way out yeah and in lodi in 14 minutes, we can be in five feet of water. So yeah. it might be a little soggy when you get to it. True that, true that. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know, those uh, heat, those uh, what are those, sealers, food sealers. Those oh, yeah. Sealers, yeah. Well, they float, too. They get air in them. Yeah. So, bam. Uh, there are over 27,000 fire departments in the U.S. They encompass 58,000-plus fire stations, 21,000-plus EMS agencies, nearly 18,000 law enforcement agencies, and a total of about 8 million people in the field of responders. Wow. Is that crazy? It's mm-hmm. a nation in itself. Yeah. Absolutely. And those are people with a lot of knowledge that put right. yourselves on the line. Oh, yeah. And they go through and see things that even horror movies can't dream up. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, because it's real. Right, yeah. And our dispatchers that take all this information, Assess what they do, mm-hmm. where that call goes, how things start getting handled, and plugging in the agencies while they're talking to you. And they, they're the, really the first link in that chain. And not only are they on the phone with you, they're on their instruments, other computers in the background, right. getting the agencies linked up that are going to respond to you and that scene that you're on, mm-hmm. whether you're at work or you're at home or out in your car and with a car accident. I mean, they do a tremendous job. Yeah. And what they're finding within the industry is that there is a higher incidence of suicide. Yeah, I heard about that. Actually, yeah. um, I know a, a, a guy whose dad was a firefighter. Yeah. And I got to I talk with him, and he told me a lot of Ooh. what you're telling me, how, how crazy it was. But it turns out uh, that's what he said, too, a lot of his friends. Yeah. Also, firefighters in particular, they have a, a much higher incidence of cancer. Yes, they they're do. Because they're always around all those toxic oh, things, yeah. Uh, yeah. chemicals and well, you, smoke. You know, what that makes me me wonder is like when they burn the rice fields out here yeah. or they burn trees that mm. have been hit with pesticides for x number of years what we breathe in the air unknowingly oh yeah, it's yeah. Awful. so i know we're covering a lot of things here but um they are they're they're the first contact for us mm-hmm. and so they do a really a thankless job wow. and there's a lady her name is norma torres and she is a past 911 operator of 17 years for wow. down in L.A. with the police department. Nice. And she was on a call, and the lady that called in was Spanish before, and she, got, she was the one that ended up with the call. The initial operator that took the call didn't speak Spanish and told this lady to hang on. Right. She was on hold for 20 minutes Get during a domestic here. violence situation. Yeah, wow. And it, it didn't end well. No. Oh, no. No. So it kind of haunted her. And she started lobbying the, the departments for mental health. 
and taking care of the dispatchers. So she ran for Congress. She's wow. down in the city of Ontario. She What's made her name? Norma J. Torres. It's the 35th congressional district. Wow. It covers Ontario, Pomona, Chino, and Fontana. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's really a, a small district when you look at it. It's yeah. got to be highly populated, though, yeah. to have a, their own congressional representative for basically four cities. Well, they got an airport, I think. No, not really. There's nothing there. Oh, really? Man. Yeah. They're, they're outside of the Riverside area, and they're oh, not okay. quite in the, in the Orange County, L.A. area. I thought Ontario yeah. had, a, had a little airport. But they might. Yeah. Might Things be like change. ours. Like ours, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a municipal airport. Mm -hmm. well, wait a minute, we're getting international flights out of there. Oh, yeah, that's right. Tell it. Oh, yeah. That's right. Big you know, time. we're getting Amazon in. Mm -hmm. Hawaii, More baby. money into the city. Mm -hmm. They should be a sponsor. Hey, there you go. Good job, Ben. Good job. Yeah. We got that. We will have to go visit yeah. them. Did you know they sponsor the stock market now? Really? Stockton Airport? Oh, yeah. okay. We need them. All mm -hmm. right. We'll have to mm -hmm. do that. So what, what Ms. Torres did was she introduced into Congress this March called the 911 Saves Act that reclassifies the dispatchers into first responders mm. that gives them a higher pay grade and better treatment oh that's good, good. cuz they you know they with especially on the mental health side they get more visits but there's still not enough mm -hmm. right yeah there's a company up in Seattle well that's actually crazy that they weren't considered first responders already i that's, know that's a what a major oversight well it is but yeah but good thing it's been rectified well it's on the path. Oh, it's, yeah. The, the, the initial on. first step is done. It's still got to go being introduced and passed in the House to go to the Senate to then probably back to the House again, depending on what amendments they attach to it. Right. And then finally get a signature. So it's, it's one of those things. And I would advise people to get a hold of our local congressman, Jerry McNerney, mm -hmm. and his office mm -hmm. and tell him to make sure that this bill gets passed. He can put his assistance behind it. We need it. And one of the other issues with the, the dispatch centers is they are woefully short of people. Wow. So they end up pulling double shifts or working over and bringing the, other, the next shift in early. And they're all subject to who can fill in because not just anybody can hop on the phone and go 911. Yeah. So they're looking to, to help that as well. And they're um, also looking on how to do crisis centers which they're starting to do in different places. Idaho's looking at doing something similar with the 911 bill. Yeah. So there's a lot going on in the, the actual responder community, which is 8 million people. What a huge wow. segment. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, that's the, you don't think about it because you just see your, you know, two, yeah. two guys on, a, on an ambulance and, and five or six guys maybe on a fire engine, and, and you don't gather this multiplicity mm -hmm. of right. the industry or even our local town. I think if we knew how many firefighters are here in Stockton mm -hmm. and EMS people and you know all their support people, yeah. it would be, be, be pretty good. I'm going to have to find out. It's like 5% of the town. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But they fill an arena. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's something that uh, you know, I pay attention to because it involves the community. Right. And... We're, we're on the sidelines, but we're having this outside look in now that there's so much information out there, and so we aggregate this information. Yeah, well, like with the, with the, um, the ballot measure that um, it was kind of controversial, the last one where they were talking about the EMS o overtime and whether they get paid for their breaks and things like that. Right. But that stemmed from a bunch of lawsuits because, uh, because they're just working overtime, working overtime. Right. Yeah. Well, it also stemmed from the fact firefighters got pay, gets pay, they get paid no matter what, whether right. they're on a break, having dinner, sleeping. Right. They get paid, and what's to the, me, what's they, the difference? Right. They, yeah, so, they're the same as the firefighters because they're they've got to respond twenty four seven when they're on shift. Right. right. So I, I think that was just righting a wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You know, well, one well one part I think uh, they they. I think they, they had lawsuits ongoing and it blocked those. So yeah. that was kind of a They were glad the voters passed it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Backhand, front hand. And they mm -hmm. and the uh, they're also calling for increased training on the dispatchers. Yes. Uh, it is HR sixteen twenty nine that was introduced. All right, we gotta remember that number. Follow yes, it. Sixteen twenty nine. And it is um, 
because the, the operators respond to information that's obtained from various forms to be effective. And we're looking at, you know, think about this. They're having issues right now with coping with what they hear. Mm -hmm. And now we want to feed them text. They're talking about doing video. I'm not for that. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's laying too much on people to be a witness to some of the things they actually get to hear over the phone. Mm -hmm. And if it's having that kind of an impact just from an audio standpoint yeah. to add the visual to it, I, you know, it would be like system overload. Yeah. What if, what if um, in the dispatch office uh, there were a couple, one or, or at least one on, on, um, you know, on, available at, at the time, uh, someone who specifically deals with those type of things like, you know, trauma certified, they are there are actually debriefings in some districts i i don't know about this district these are this is bringing questions i want to get answered yeah. from people in the field whether it's fire police sure. mm -hmm. ems you know we'll sure. have somebody from amr uh, i talked to uh, don getz he's the area manager for right. reach air ambulance last night and they they go through some of the th same things yeah but they're they're a really close-knit group as far as the air ambulance service and they debrief each other and they they do have counseling available mm, yeah i i don't know what the services are here but it's, it's something to look at yeah you know and, and so actually it's something for citizens to be aware of do do they like you know when an officer is involved in, in an incident um someone gets killed or something a lot of times they have an automatic paid administrative leave you know you take a few days off um mm -hmm. they, they kind of figure out what's going on uh, do you know there are some debriefings in that, as I understand it. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know the inner workings of the departments. That's not my area. But do do EMS folks or, or um, dispatchers? I mean, if they particularly have a particularly traumatic situation, do they also like? Get it, it depends on the area. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I I can't speak for this area or, or anybody else's. I know what I'm reading here. Right. And they're trying to make this as a national policy since they're going to reclassify the dispatchers as first responders like i said it's going to add to the the system and it's also going to add to the workload within the system sure right sure but and, but at, and you but need that, qualified people for that but that system isn't generally like capitalistically paid you know that system is uh budgeted right and uh, this is how much it's going to take and we're going to have to pay it you know it's kind of like you know that's part of that first 50 percent that each city gets you know their budget mm -hmm. right and in some departments it's the good old boy network you know well yeah. suck it up and keep going yeah, yeah. well yeah. after 15 16 18 years 20 years they've had enough yeah, yeah. and that's how mm -hmm. they're they're having such a uh, change in the suicide rate on mm -hmm. the professions i know wow. my i don't want to phrase this let's just say my first wife hmm. uh she went through police academy training uh -huh. and they said welcome to the profession that is highest in divorce drugs alcoholism and suicide yeah that was her first five minutes in class yeah and you said you did say first wife so yeah mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> case in point yeah, <laughs> yeah. the facts yeah that's right serious. there that's no it's definitely and even just the training was mentally challenging for the stress that you're under and that's and that's the academic side that's the peripheral first aid that they're taught that's also getting on the gun range and doing that and then the physical training they go through so so is i mean we know we have shortages in those in those um careers um and uh, you know i mean stockton is doing something about it there's like uh, you know the, the uh, academy mm -hmm. or um people the who are gonna post academy be, yeah service mm -hmm. um, but I mean, uh, is there what what can attract people to that field? Is it just got to be more money, or you know, when you I was reading today on uh, Code Green, mm -hmm. it's a nonprofit up in Washington. I think it's out of Spokane, and you read a couple. I, I it was tough to read these guys just venting on their site because they have a story site and what they've gone through. Uh, on scene, what they what experienced after that scene, mm -hmm. and what life was like carrying forward, not necessarily 
including right after, but also years out, there's certain things that came back and haunted them. Yeah. And so this Code Green is a way to assist in the mental health care of the professionals that are out there, you know, yeah. doing life and limb to keep us going, whether it's a life-saving event or, a, you know, as far as a heart attack or a stroke or something where somebody's a hostage. Mm -hmm. And that, that carries with you. Yeah. You know, they're not always trained the way they need to be to handle it. So this organization is facilitate is because their insurance doesn't cover continuing visits. It gives them X number of visits. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is to pick up that slack. <clears throat> right. And, but it's not like you can train somebody to be, you know, impervious to traumatic situations. And I don't think I'd want to have that person around me. <laughs> no. <laughs> no feeling, you know, and, and robots can't do it. But yeah. you're asking them to act like a robot not to yet, cut off the feeling. Yeah, we talked about it earlier. <laughs> Your drone ambulance is on the way. Yeah. Well, you know what? You're right. That is happening. Right. Mm -hmm. They can send defibrillators in the field through, yeah. through, a drone, through a drone, and yeah. whoever's on scene gets a quick lesson on how to use them. Right. And it's, as traffic is mounted up in cities, it's an alternative. So that's, like, that, that's a potential. I mean, for a field, for someone to actually have to be, it might be beneficial for you to be non-emotional. Uh, yeah. Maybe that might but be. But you know, when you, when you get at house numbers and they start doing that, Man, you should paint your house numbers on your roof in big numbers like they do at police cars. <laughs> right, right. You know, and I and I actually advise people that live in rural areas to yeah. do that. Yeah. Right, because they do go out on the And and out right. in Nevada, if you're not bleeding, they're not coming. And, and that's <laughs> oh, a quote yeah. from an EMT yeah, out absolutely. there. Uh out Gardnerville, mm -hmm. uh, Topaz Lakes, mm -hmm. you know, T R E out there, the Topaz real estate. There, if you really, if you're not bleeding, tough luck, buddy. Oh, Take man. care of it. You know. God. <laughs> God, that's messed up, right? That's so brutal. Well, so, it is. So, like, you call nine one and distance. you tell them, you tell them your situation, and they say, "Wow, you're pretty far out, man." Well, mm -hmm. is there yeah. anything? Is there anything you want me to tell your loved ones? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it's cruel, but out of my I mean, jurisdiction. Yeah. yeah. And is there a message you, you want know, to leave? You, uh, you brought up an interesting point. Wow. Because mm -hmm. what's happening on a local basis and elsewhere here in California, there's such a high volume of calls mm -hmm. that they're prioritizing the calls. You can call in and get a busy signal. You can call in and get a queue, or you can call in and it just keeps ringing. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. And I, I've, I've been put in a queue calling in. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. And it wasn't for anybody's health. It was a start of a, a grass fire on the side of the freeway. Yeah. Yeah, so and I'm like, what? Yeah, and then I, I try. I dialed information for non-emergency to get through, and I ended up somehow I got connected with the holding tank at the jail. Okay. Hmm. So even they didn't have the right number. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so and it you know, was, so it wasn't it wasn't a holding tank of water. No, it wasn't going to help. No. no, they had their own nine one one because they behind bars. <laughs> yeah. Um, the the thing seconds is seconds don't count. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hey, Where you know, are you going with this? For all the folks out there, a hey, uh, you know, no disrespect. We're mm -hmm. just uh, we're just uh, playing. But um, well, I mean, <laughs> you, yeah. You know, if they think our sense of humor is a little mm -hmm. off kilter, mm -hmm. they ought to read some tweets by trauma nurses, oh, ER, yeah. mm -hmm. EMT technicians. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're really bizarre yeah. and really. Um. Oh man, that, that good dark. dark. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dark. That's, yeah, it's it's very like the Twitter universe is very. It's its own beast in itself, and yeah. it can get very dark very oh, fast. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, you know, hey, even in even in stressful situations, you know, poking fun mm -hmm. or, or or laughing or smiling, it, yeah. it gets us through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The the um. That's the bill. That's that nervous reaction. I'm just right? a bill. Yes. Yeah. Hey, Capitol Hill. They should know more about it, I tell you. <laughs> uh, the interesting thing was that our 911 system started years after they already had one in Britain. Really? The, the first one in Britain started in 1937. They dialed 999. Oh, wow. For their system. Three nines? Wonder Three nines. What, what was Which the... makes a lot more sense because it's right by your thumb right, on our phones. Yeah. But we do nine one one. Interesting. Yeah, and our system didn't actually start till 
what came about is 1978 by an act of Congress to normalize the whole system with a standard mm -hmm. number. Mm -hmm. And in the in the old days, now we're we're talking like back in the 20s. You know, you yeah. had cities, you had cars, so you yeah. had car accidents. People you didn't got hurt. numbers. You just picked up the, and said the number you wanted to call. Yeah. Well, well, that was part of it. Yeah, they they put it, right? phones on the street, and then they found out they couldn't do that because it got misused. Yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> that was before nine one one. People were calling for other things. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. Meet me on. Uh... Yeah. Meet me. Yeah. yeah. Behind and the park. <laughs> what What was interesting is one of the stats out of that era is that New York's Bellevue Hospital was getting 2,500 calls a day wow. for emergencies and other things, I'm Wait, sure. Receiving calls? Yeah. yeah. From Bellevue? The, that, isn't that a, a yeah. asylum? Well, it may not have been then. I don't know the history of Bellevue. Well, yeah, yeah that was a while ago. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it was probably everything. But that's, isn't that crazy? <laughs> that is crazy. That was mm -hmm. back then. And yeah. now... That was in the 20, 1920s? That was in the 20s, yeah. yeah. Because it wasn't... So there was... You had to. That's you had to get to the end point. You like there was nobody. Yeah, to talk you had to, to find between. the phone on the block. Yeah. Right, right. And what if you were the one that was injured? And nobody was around, and you right. got. What do you do? Crawl to the phone. You get on your. Yeah. Get dragged by your horse. That's I don't, right. You know, I don't yeah. know. Hold that tail. Don't get kicked. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that was kind of the the that was actually the start of that process. But well, it you, took you remember years. when we were kids? We dialed zero for all that stuff. Well, yeah. right? Yeah. Operator was it, was it just zero or did you do and pound? You, you did, did dial zero and it, you didn't dial did, did, zero. Did, you, did, went, did, you went, you went. Yeah, it was an actual did, dial and you heard right? it. Yeah. And uh, you, you dialed zero for the police. Uh, oh, yeah. Fire you just, an for, operator. For, for information. Like, yeah. hey, I'm looking for a phone number. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, you dialed zero for all sorts of stuff. And mm -hmm. it was a switchboard. An actual person answered. Yeah. That somebody answered and they they. Figured, they told you, you told them what you wanted, mm -hmm. and they took this and plugged it in, which was what uh, there's early stage switchboards yeah, at yeah. the computer history. Direct so, connect. Yeah, yeah. Uh, direct Operator. Yeah. Oh, and cool. you were also in the queue for whoever got your call. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because you're always, you know, you're mixed in with everybody using their phone on a, you know, yeah, on yeah. a daily basis. A lot of party lines back in those oh, days. Oh, man. <laughs> Pick a phone. Hey, I need to use the phone. Could you hang up? Uh, yeah. And that was actually true. Or, hey, can you come over and help me? I just sliced my hand, you know? Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Good thing this phone and, is always on. <laughs> yeah. And, the, and also back then, each city, once they started figuring out they needed to do this as some kind of a system, they had their own numbers. That's true, too. It was Each a three one one, or yeah. you know, whatever you know. The op maybe the operator handled it. Maybe it was a different number for the hospital. Mm -hmm. It was whatever they thought would work because nobody had nine five an five help. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a um, a lady in 1958. They they credit in this article. It's out of the Washington. No, it's not out of the Washington. It's New York Times. Excuse me. And she was calling a fire into the nearby apartment and she had a dial O and she goes why can't there be something simpler <laughs> okay I mean, you know hmm. why would it be and that was 1958 would it be possible to cut out the operator and dial directly into a prearranged emergency number genius that she, was in 1958 she yeah, must have, she must have been to London yeah <laughs> and it was like oh and you're like, okay. Nine, nine, nine. Yeah. Nine, nine, nine. And the... That's the... I mean, we're, we're advanced, but our own thinking gets in the way. You know, we... Yeah. yeah. It's mm -hmm. that elusive obvious, which I think is what Ready for Rescue keys in on for helping people in our mm -hmm. homes. Right. Well, you know, we got, we got this mentality, and I think it's kind of an American mentality. It's kind of like, you know, I'm going to tough it out, or I, I'm already doing good enough, or my way is good enough, or this mm -hmm. is, hey, if it's good enough yeah, for my mama, it's good enough for me. Yeah, you that know? rugged individualism uh, is, is mm -hmm. what's killing us right now. We're dying from it. Yeah. Right. yeah. You know, admitting our faults and, you know, having feelings as men and... And then being afraid no, of the macho, being the macho passionate. Kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and, and that, I feel like that's, I mean, you talk about that across the board as an American. I, for me, it was a cultural thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, yeah. That's right. Absolutely. That's right. You mm -hmm. know, in different cultures, you don't complain. You just yeah, you tough just, your you way tough through it. it out. 
No, that's true. That's true. It, you know, and you don't say we are, anything. We are, <laughs> no, we no. Are transitioning especially to when you, you know you're a kid. Otherwise, you can get the chonkler or something. Oh, no, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I came from a country where uh, kids don't say nothing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is that right? <laughs> you sit at that table. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. That was it. You fall off, you get back up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, that's and if kind not, of you're going to lay there until you get that back was, up. That was, right. that was the, the era. Yeah. yeah. Um, Alabama, of all things was the there was a senator in 1968 that established the 911 system through AT&T. Mm-hmm. Wow. Alabama. Alabama. Shout Alabama. out. Shout out to Bama. Well, yeah. you can shout out to the city of Gustine because they were the first one to implement a 911 system in California. Oh, okay. Gustine. I drive, yeah. I drive through Gustine. Yeah. You do. Most people do. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, 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 and while, it's, while you're getting blown off the road. <laughs> <laughs> How true is that? Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. It's, like, it's called Gustine. Yeah. yeah. It's always Gustine. <laughs> yeah. Well, I wonder, wonder what the, the, the miles per hour and the winds are out there. When you oh. approach it, there's a sign. That's, it's just it's a permanent sign. Really? That says, Wind gusts. Yeah, caution. Yeah. Caution. <laughs> Watch out. Any time of day. Hold and your hat. <laughs> now, here's here's the interesting thing is that there was a, a Warren 911 Emergency Assistance Act mm-hmm. is what mandated 911 for California. And it was signed by Governor Reagan at the time. Oh, okay. Then Governor Reagan. Ronald Reagan. And it, that's how we ended up with a small surcharge on our phone bills. Mm-hmm. Is that wild? And then it gets kind of crazier because the, the, in smaller areas, the first ambulances were hearses. Mm-hmm. Scary. And they, <laughs> yeah, it's like, where am I going? It's that old, old it's school. Ghostbusters yeah, the old yeah, school Ghostbusters exactly. one. Well, yeah. 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 And your driver <laughs> was the hearse driver. Oh, nice. And really? all he knew, yeah. So if he's and driving he fast, it's good. But if he's yeah. driving he was, slow, he was the wheel. Man. He was yeah. the wheel <laughs> man, right? You're not quite going to the the hospital. Yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> and that was their their thing was to drive fast. Oh yeah. yeah. That's it's, why they had the Cadillacs. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Four hundred fifty-four cubic inches. There's, yeah, there's there the picture. Is. How's that yeah, look? Is, nah, it, is it on go. camera? Right there, oh, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that's really dope. I'd like one of those. Yeah. Put all that equipment in there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what? For the radio. There was, there was a radio, and that was it, yeah, probably. Yeah. That is a radio station. Mm-hmm. I think it's so good. Oh, God, yes. Mm-hmm. And it was mostly in the rural areas that they wanted this. Mm-hmm. And the rural areas always present the most issues. Yeah. You know, it's like a fire. If you have a fire up in Amador County, there's 3,000 homes with one way in, one way out. Mm-hmm. And I, I have been to a home that's actually two and a half miles off of Highway 88 just before you get into Jackson, there's this little canyon. Yeah. And she's, they're two and a half miles back in. At times, a single lane road. Mm-hmm. Also, a couple of gates to go through. And what do you do if you have a 911 call? Uh, you, you know? You get the Nevada treatment. You, there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, and you get, you know, th- somehow you get them in your car and meet them at the road. Yeah. I, it's, I don't know what they do back there. They just, well, the fire road gets us over to Sutter Creek. I'm like that's everybody the fire has a, road. Everyone has a four by four. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Got to have yeah. one. Yeah. And so, one of the things that implemented the nine one one system was a grant from Johnson and Johnson. Wow. The, hmm. uh, Interesting. The Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, which started in, in seventy two, yeah. with a fifteen million dollar grant for improved emergency services in rural areas. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Right. Hey, that's, hey, a, hey, that's, that's, that's some giving back. And yeah. that was, well, it was given back because they had all this money from the Band-Aid. Remember when Band-Aids first came out? Yeah. Yeah, yes, yes, you know, yeah. I'm stuck on Band-Aid because it's stuck Band-Aid's on me. Stuck on I mean, me. how many years has that been and we still remember? Mm-hmm. Well, you guys do. I was before my time. You weren't even a thought. Yeah. I was, yeah. You wasn't even, <laughs> even around yet. Yeah. So they, they are really have been helpful to... Um, facilitate the start of the system and they they still help the system at the time that this started nationally there were 12 paramedic teams wow wow that's it and now there's hmm. thousands now pioneers they're pioneers. like navy seals yeah. you got it <laughs> that's it wow well okay. well that's that was super that was a quick uh i feel yeah, Cru- cruise. Through, oh yeah, cruise, cruise through, through the nine one one history. Yeah, which there's it, a lot of great information out there. Ben, we could go out oh, of calls is. with a 
with Cliff now. Okay. We're well, so, yeah, we're, well, actually, I'm, I'm you know, you. I've asked to go, and because of the HIPAA rules, yeah. I can't. No, you, yeah. It's patient confidentiality. Right. Yeah. Uh, I want to thank everybody for listening today to all of us here at Ready for Rescue. And remember to reach out to us on mm -hmm. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and on our website, ready, yeah. the number four, rescue.com. Ready and tell us your 911 story. Rescue. We got a blog. We got, you know, Namaste. the social media. We also have a, an, a very cool app that is available, nice. which, which we can, uh, uh, we can kind of we'll, tease. We'll get that We can kind of tease yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. We'll tease yeah. it. We'll but get... If you visit the website, you can, you can sign yes. up and try it. All right. It's in beta, huh? It's All right. It's in beta. It's, yes. All right. Thank you so much. We'll catch you next time on The Voice of San Joaquin.